Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Cork in the North podcast. A big thank you for your continued support during these trying times as we continue to grow in this dominated white male industry of podcasting. I do apologise uh, for being another person who does that. Anyway, uh, please do sign up to the Patreon, £3 a month for extra episodes. You also get your discounts on the live show, which is on the 10th of December. We are nearly sold out already. Uh, we're going to have a great day up there, starting at 3, finishing at 5. Bring your own booze and there's a cafe there as well. So there's none of these babysitters or taxis are getting pissed. You can still get home for 5 o'clock. We're changing the podcast game. We're doing afternoon pods. We're not changing the game. We're following a strategic strategy that's been done by other podcasts. If anything, we're copying people. So... Uh, please do uh, keep liking, sharing and subscribing on this uh, podcast and buy some fucking merch. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the episode this week. We have a man who is a friend slowly becoming a, a very important part of the Cork and the North team, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, James McKegney. James, good to see you again, my man. Very nice to be here. One of another the, white male. One, another, another white male. Uh, another man who is uh, doing big things on the comedy scene. Uh, he's got a big future ahead of him. If he just listens... <laughs> <laughs> Starts listening to his peers about his material. We can really, we can really improve you, James. <laughs> as soon as he gets away from the xenophobic stuff, you know, like, uh, but it's it's the best stuff. Like it always hits the hardest. So. Uh, uh, another man we have here who can we say has 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 come a long way in life, ladies and gentlemen, to be here today with us. Not just physically, mentally, transport-wise as well, is a man that is uh, currently in Belfast doing a solo show at the Limelight Theatre. His name is Thomas Green. He's been on a tour of the UK and Ireland, selling out venues across uh, England. He sold out the Comedy Store, which is no mean feat. I couldn't do that. Uh, he's a great comedian from Australia. And most importantly as well, uh, he's recently just become a, a new dad uh, to a baby as well. Uh, you'd like to know that producer Sean is due a baby son pretty soon. Oh, yeah. I am indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so when, we're all... When's he due? April? Oh Just wow! Yeah. Not far. That'll go quick, man. <clears throat> yeah, know. he doesn't keep banging on about it. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, keep, asking. <laughs> keep asking. I know. I know. Uh, so there's there's two people in here that are going to be parents, and then there's two other people, me and James, who will never see the light of day of a child's nappy uh, ever again. Again, or ever. God will ever. ever. Again. Uh, so Thomas, uh, before we big begin, ladies and gentlemen, you need to know something. Uh, Thomas popped into Q Radio this morning to come on to promote a show in Limelight, which we were very happy to do because he's an incredibly talented and funny comedian, someone who I've worked with many times uh, over in England. And I said to him, oh, you know, do you want to pop up and do the pod while you've got the day free? And he was like, yeah, man, love it. Love to do it. All this kind of stuff. So we forwarded the address. We told him what time to be here. So I'm now going to pass you over to Thomas, who's now going to tell you <laughs> what has happened in the last couple of hours before we started this podcast. Okay, so um, Andrew had told me... Um, uh, to get here for midday and I was like yes yeah, sweet no dramas no that's, dramas that's there, easy. I can do that so um, I get the Uber from the hotel now um, I'd had a little kip because I was running on you know but you got into the hotel early yeah got in the hotel early Perfect. like you said yeah I was all, all, and I acted confident and went up to the desk because they say three o'clock check in it's bullshit Andrew said so I went up and I said it's not true it's bullshit, true. It's bullshit it's not true. mate it's true I can tell you mate it's bullshit I, I used got to work at hotel. half ten and I said just here to check in, and she went, way, bro. "Yeah, cool." Oh, yeah. Bullshit, yeah. mate. Yeah, Man. is the is the check out did, or can you sleep by that eleven right. o'clock? If it's eleven o'clock, you could probably get away with twenty to twelve. So, oh, yeah, the hotels let you get to twelve if you ask them. All right, okay. Yeah, I'd always ask if you can do a late check out. Okay, I'll usually extend yeah. it by an hour. Smile and be confident. Yeah, yeah. act important. Okay, if you yeah. tell them, if you go up and above tomorrow, everything, listen. <laughs> listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know what you Very do there tomorrow? What time's your flight home tomorrow? Uh, not Thursday. Oh, Thursday, because you're going to Dublin. Yeah. Right, say for, <laughs> say for example, you're on a three o'clock flight Thursday, right, from Dublin, but your yeah. check-off from your hotel in Dublin is 11 o'clock, but you want to stay till half 12. Yeah. You go down, nine o'clock. Hi, guys, how you doing? Can I just say, it's my first time staying in this hotel. Unbelievable. Bottom I'm of the checking out bed. this morning. Like I'm checking out this morning, and I just want to say, every single person, the staff members here have been unbelievable. The <laughs> breakfast has been great. The room has been great. Really enjoying it. My flight's not till three. Is there a chance I can just stay until 12? Um, because I've just got a bit of work to do, but absolutely loved it. They, they can't say no. The next time you do that, they're going to be like, we know you're done. You so are great. a charmer. You, you have yeah, to go in confident, devil. mate. So a little tip for you, Thomas. There right, you so Thomas checks into the to the hotel, the Leonardo. Yeah, the Leonardo. Nice hotel. Yeah, I went in there, check in. And uh, I thought, right, I'm going to have a little kip now oh, yeah. for 45 minutes. Had a little sleep, woke up. You know when you have a sleep 
Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> I've had a few of those. <laughs> Oh, I'm aware of it. Most days, actually. <laughs> Thomas, people in Northern Ireland do sleep okay. sometimes. Yeah, I heard different. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you know when you have a kip and you you wake up because you're so tired, you have a little quick power nap. Yeah, for an hour, mm-hmm. but or forty five, but you wake up and it, you're almost worse off. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Yeah, I was in struggle town. I woke yeah. up and I was like, "Where am I? Belfast? Okay, why am I in Belfast?" Like, <laughs> sort of really felt groggy. And then uh, quickly got ready and uh, ironed, ironed my shirt and that. Got ready. Thought, you know, I want to look good for the cork of the north, you know. <laughs> Respect and, the cork of the north. And for the podcast as well. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so I got all ready. And <laughs> so I got, <laughs> got, You're in my country now, pal. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I got ready. Uh, get the Uber. And uh, get here, and I'm, I'm messaging Andrew. Hey, man, uh, I messaged him at, uh, actually at twenty to twelve because because I, I was so fucked. I said, "Hey, listen, do you record tomorrow? Or is it just today?" Didn't hear anything back. I thought, right, better get the Uber, just in case, you know. And I get the Uber, and then I message him and I say, "Hey, mate, I'm in the Uber now. I'll be there for about quarter past twelve. Yeah. No response. I was like, "That's cool. I think he was already recording a pod. That's fine." So I get here. I go downstairs to the car park. It looks like I'm going to get fucking murdered. Am I allowed to swear? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to. Yeah, it's definitely somewhere you'd be lured to. Because there's, it's it's an amalgamation of things that shouldn't be together. Yeah. You've got automobile repair services, a podcast studio, fa- fantastic studio, by the way. The gym. The gym, which. <laughs> we all stand- need. We all need. We all need the gym. We all do need the gym. And I'm assuming that maybe these guys are lifting cars and so they're trying to build up the muscles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They don't, or it's money laundering. Huh? Or it's money laundering. Very is easily. that true? Yeah. There's a lot of lacking on in Belfast. There's a lot of, like, what is it, taxi places that are also <laughs> Chinese? Yeah. Did you say, yeah? Uh-huh. They're, they're so you can get a taxi, but you can also order a Chinese while you're in there? Yeah. What, in the cab? It, in the, oh, in the actual, base. the taxi oh, place. I thought you meant. You were in the Once cab. You're in the and cab. You're in the cab. You're like, can I go to Chinese? They go, yeah, sure. And then a no, guy they have comes a walk. out. I'll in the just front whip seat. it There's up. A guy he's driving in the front seat and he's just cooking the Chinese. <laughs> he's just as he's do that. Yeah, his little flaps. He's just back seat. <laughs> the back seat. He's in the boot. And I know on camera, he's like wanking at someone off. Wanking right? a couple like, of fellas off. Walk in the front seat and he's just that's good. Good rest technique, but I wanted to walk, not a wank. So go on anyway. So yeah, so I knock on the door downstairs in the dodgy car park. And, yeah, there uh, has been murders in the area. Really? Yeah. It's not surprising. Really? Yeah. Someone didn't pay for their car service or? Uh, there, there's, there's a long history of. <laughs> in this area. Of murders. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's oh, right. we're here to change the face of it. We're here yeah. to make it more woke. We're here to put a smile on murder. What's you the... know what I mean? <laughs> rebrand, <laughs> rebrand murder. Rebrand murder. <laughs> it's not for everyone, but if it's for you, <laughs> yeah. you're at the right you place. You know where to go. Right. Well, I'm from a city there. So you're downstairs at that door and that door is locked. It's locked, completely locked. There is no way that door was locked when I came in, mate, because I walked in with it somebody else and we just walked up the stairs and no one locked it. So someone must have come in behind you because it 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 was definitely locked. I rattled it, I pushed it, I rattled it again, I banged on it, I looked up at the window and then someone, <laughs> someone was at the gym door next to it and I went to go in there so I thought, or oh, maybe someone can buzz up. From a different yeah. company, maybe. Fair play, yeah. And then I just looked like a bit of a weirdo peering <laughs> into the gym with my hood up. Yeah. Like there's got to be gone. another murder in the <laughs> area. <laughs> yeah. <And there's> the <laughs> <laughs> Trying to put a good face on murder. You know, this one's going to be good, I promise yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> I've come a long way for this one. Yeah, I've come yeah. from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm committed. <laughs> I don't even know what this area is. What's this area? West Belfast. West Belfast. It's near the falls. The west is normally where they've got like the... The Irish. The, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say it's normally in the west, like West London. That's where there's like, yeah. you know, the Trendy. performance arts yeah. and stuff and Soho. Is you this like a Soho? Yes. It's west... Huh? Uh, the West is usually like a posher area in other cities. Yeah. 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 Okay. Not here. Oh, no. so the, is the East the posh bit? 
No, no. worse than these. <laughs> there is it. no posh bit, mate. <laughs> None of it. <laughs> there is no posh bit. <laughs> no posh bit of Belfast. This place no, is the, built on PTSD. So... There is no posh bit. <laughs> what would be the poshest bit? Posh bit of Belfast is South Belfast. South Belfast. Like Malone Road. Right, Ormer yeah. Ormer Road. Oh, Ulster yes. Rugby. Yes, yes, yes. Even that's not that posh. No. Nah. When you compare it to London posh. Yeah. It's not that posh. Oh, London posh is ridiculous. Though. So you're banging on the, de- the window. Yeah, banging on the window. And uh, no, no response, James. None. I was like, what's going on? And I thought, you know, I'll give him a buzz. So I call Andrew. No response. Oh, call him again. No response. And it was actually coming up on the phone with um, like like no answer, like as yeah. though he didn't have reception. And I was like, oh, God, this is bad. I thought maybe I'm so tired because the door's shut. I couldn't see any lights up there. And it's quite – I didn't realize the door was tinted. It just <laughs> looked dark. And I was like, oh, I've come to the wrong spot because this – this does not this look like a podcast studio. And then on top of all this, I thought maybe because I'm so tired from being a new dad, I'm not going to bang on about it, but <laughs> it's amazing. I <laughs> thought maybe, because I'm running on an hour's sleep, I thought maybe I'd miss, got the comms wrong. Yeah. Comms. Maybe. Comms, man. And then uh, it turns out I didn't. I just stood in the car park freezing my dick off for half an hour. Um, and a guy walked past me and looked at me and I had to look at him and be like, <laughs> I'm just waiting for someone. He's like, mm, and just kept walking. <laughs> He's like, I looked dodgy as fuck. Yeah. yeah. And then I got to the point where I was like, do you know what? I think maybe Andrew's actually in the city and I've got this wrong because he's not answering his phone. Like a normal human. And I would never do that to you, Thomas. I'm not the type of guy. No, 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 no. This, 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 this was one of Andrew's power moves. He was just watching the phone ring off every time. He just wanted As to make... As we were up here and be like, look at this fucker. He just wanted to make He thinks he's man. coming on cork in the north. <laughs> he, what does he think Dude, he, he is? is he wanted to shake you up so before you get in. getting back he to you normally. does this with every guest. <laughs> the first time they come, it's like it, he doesn't answer them. They have to get an Uber back every day. I'm gutted that I got it on a day that's cold. I wish he'd done it to me in the summer right. I would have coped but yeah so I, I, I didn't get through so what I did is I got back in the Uber yeah I uh, called an Uber out to this dodgy car park that I got in the car and the Uber says to me which backs up the theory of he thought I was a murderer because he looks at me and he goes is it just you met <laughs> and I was yeah, like it is no yeah it is <laughs> 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 If you'd come 20 minutes ago, mate, there was <laughs> two of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he, uh, he got me in the car, drove me into town. And as I'm about literally a minute from the Leonardo, text <laughs> oh, comes in, you okay? <laughs> I was like, Andrew's booty calling me. <laughs> you up? <laughs> yeah, bro. Are you okay? So we, we arranged for him to come back. Now, can I ask you a question? How much was your taxis? Uh, it was £7.96 each time. So Seven, about 14, twenty-three 20. something quid. I for the mistake oh. will <laughs> apologize for the door not being open. I don't know why the door wasn't open. This is not something we do to guests. We like to communicate effectively with our guests. So as a token gesture yeah. from us here at Cork and the North Studio, this is coming out of Sean's wages. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, no, it's not. Sorry, Sean. Sean. As a token Sean. gesture from us, I'm very sorry for the mishap. That's okay. I'm very sorry that you've had a, a, a turbulent time on Cork and the North. We're not here. We don't stand for that. We uh, have a HR policy here of inclusivity. <laughs> we welcome all foreigners. <laughs> yeah, to Cork in our podcast. I have felt very so welcome. I up am to that point. going to refund you your camp fares, okay? Oh, thank you, As mate. an apology, I know you're a new dad. I know this will go a long way. It will. Uh, <laughs> at least this is about two like, nappies. What, seven nappies yeah. or yeah. something like that. Yeah. So, Thomas Green, on behalf of Cork in the North, we are going to pay him his Ubers. <laughs> how much was it? You'll take 20, though, won't you? Yeah, it's okay. uh, <laughs> how, how much was it? 23, 7, 14, 21. It was four cabs, it's 28. No, it's three cabs. Oh, I'm going to drop you back. 7, 14, 21. Um, I've only got I've got twenty five or seven twenty nine. It was almost it was seven pounds ninety six times by three. Here, look, we'll give you twenty five. So that's, that's eight quid and a cork in the North Cup. I'm going to give you twenty twenty five quid. Twenty five, and I want you tonight to have a drink on me. Okay, all right. All right that's there very you go. kind. Of, I think you probably won't get a free alignment. Oh, you'll need to maybe yeah Sweet borrow boy. a few quid to get that drink. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so uh, that's an apology from us that the door wasn't open. Okay, no, that's very kind of you. That is so nice. Yeah, that is actually um, no. 
James, can yeah. we have the money back that you owe us from? Hey, how much was your petrol? Like? <laughs> James, yeah, come, I'll you take go. That that's for your actually, petrol. Yeah, okay, that's for your can petrol. Can I actually take that? No, yeah, you can if you want it. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll get it later. Uh, no, but, we, <laughs> but Thomas, Thomas, I'm very sorry this has happened. No, mate, it's fine. We're very you, sorry you've, it happened. You've okay. paid, paid it's it. a genuine, honest mistake here at Cork and in our studios. Something which we will look into, we will learn from, and we will release a statement later on as well. <laughs> Please do, that would be brilliant. So, uh, James, how are you, man? Doing good, man. Yeah, That's how's uh, the job going? Job is uh, it's going like, do you know what I mean? So uh, Amazon. Thomas, I'll tell you something about James, right? Mm-hmm. So um, obviously I've been living here for a couple of years. I yeah. uh, work with all the comics and stuff like that. And I was out gigging one night, uh, doing a gig somewhere like And uh, Shane Todd, you know Shane Todd? Mm-hmm. Shane Todd's a great comic here, very well known here, very funny guy. And he turned around to me and he goes, uh, oh, have you heard of this guy, James McKegney? I was like, I know of him, but I don't know him. Like, you know, you know where comics are like, you know, I see you maybe twice a year, three times a year. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like it's, we, we float, do you know? And uh, I was like, oh yeah. And then I worked with him and I was like, fucking hell, this guy's got it going on. So yeah, so I got to know James and he's back on and he's uh, smashing through the comedy scene at the moment. And have you been over to gig in London now at all, James? Dude, we did one gig in London in South Kensington. Oh, that's yeah. posh, isn't it? Yeah, it's oh, not yeah. posh. Vittorio Angelone put it on. Right. Was so it a it was, material night? No, it was like an Irish Irish man show. Do you say Angelone? Angelone. How do you say it? Is it Angeloni? Well, I've never met him. I've never, I've never. No, I also thought it was Angeloni. I was trying to pronounce it right. What is it? I, I thought it was Angeloni. Victorio Angeloni. I've never met Victorio. I'm sure he's lovely. Victorio. Fellow. Is it Victorio? <laughs> he's yeah, Victorio. Oh, he's, he's lovely. Is yeah. it Victorio? V- Vittorio. Vittorio. So he's like... Irish Italian. with an English accent yeah, I watched and he's clips. Italian. He's, he's great. Yeah, he's brilliant. He's smashing would, you say, it. would you say he's got an English accent? Yeah, I would say he sounds quite English. <laughs> that, <laughs> Do you not think so? I don't would. know. Oh, I hear it. Hate he'd that hate that. Yeah, so much, and I, <laughs> I love that you I know. said that. No, but he was. Um, he's, he's. I would say he's got a very strong Northern Irish accent. Really? But he was. Uh, he went to a, a very very um, posh posh school. Yeah, he did. Like he, I think he he used to. Uh, I think he's a uh, he used to play percussion and stuff. Like he, oh yeah, he does all that kind of proper stuff. Proper music, he like taught that smart thing. guy. Yeah. yeah. So we did we did his. He set up an Irish man show. So it was like me. Well, he, was he the Englishman on the? On he the was list? the English guy. Yeah, how <laughs> <Paddy> the Englishman? <laughs> <laughs> so it was like me, George Robinson, William Thompson, Robbie McShean, and I, who else was there? I don't know. There's a group of us. So we went over and did that show, and it was brilliant. And then that was. It was like the day everything was shutting down for COVID. Oh, so this so is like, 2020. Yeah, dude, as we were doing it, we were like getting texts being like, this is shutting down, flights are going to start shutting down. So it was like, it felt like the end of the world. But it was a brilliant show. That was the only time I've been over. But it was a brilliant. Is that the only time you've ever been to That's London? That's the only time I've... What? That's the only time I've done a show in London. All right. But I've been to London, yeah. But I would love to get... I thought you'd love Soho and all that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Soho, what is Soho? You, the gay part. Oh, right, okay, yeah. Love fuck it. I should know that. Yeah, you know I don't mean? know anything. I would, yeah, I need to try that You'd out. love all that. Can you man. take me over and we'll vlog it and you show me about it? Mate, I've been to GAY. It's a great spot. Yeah. To where? Gay, gay, G-A-Y. 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 I thought you said J-A-Y, like G-A-Y. 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 And, I, and then I thought you made a jump to like J, like G J well, smoking J. G-A-Y. G-A-Y. G-A. G-A-Y. G-A. <laughs> oh, That's how you spell it. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I'm aware. <laughs> James is gay. Yeah. So he loves it. Lo- I love it. You love it. <laughs> yeah. But we should, we should, we should vlog it. Me and J- me and James go we and actually search should. for go and search for some gay stuff, some lads, the stuff that you're looking the for, the gay stuff. Yeah. Do you know what I've Let's been to? I've, <laughs> I've been to a couple of prides and they're great crack. Like they're good fun. Yeah, they are. They are. Oh, very, they go off. I've like, only been to two, it, and that was when we were shooting priests at pride at both prides. Well, yeah, we, so we were dressed at priests for both pride. Yeah. Yeah, and it's weird because people like thought we were genuine priests. I Which was very strange, get I thought. It. You don't care what? I, I don't... Do you think... I don't think there is... Uh, like, Pride Parade. Yeah. I don't think there's a parade or a party in the world where people are having more fun. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. impossible. Yeah. People it, it are is, genuinely... It is great, like... Having the greatest time. Have yeah. You, have, you been, have you seen the Mardi Gras in Sydney? No. Oh, it goes off. Yeah. It's, it's a whole week. Is it our weekend? It's insane. Is it a weekend or a one? One? Is oh, like I don't a, know. I've not been. Yeah, it was. It was a blur. But I've always seen the highlights, blur. you know, yeah. on the news and stuff. Yeah, and uh, it just uh, Sydney just shuts down. I was at my Belfast Pride. Yeah, um, and I uh, finished work there at three o'clock. I was hosting a 
tent thing was just fine. And then started drinking at three o'clock. And at half past six, mate, I was in a bar in Belfast with people up on stage and drag doing lip syncing. <laughs> and I'm standing below the stage just going, this is fucking brilliant crack. Yeah. yeah. And I've never, you never feel so safe. It's such a non yeah. environment. Yeah, that's sick. It's great. You know, and compared to the usual parades we have here, it's, it's a change of pace. It's a change of pace. <laughs> <laughs> on the 12th. Like, did you know, yeah. like, Suella Baverman compared the Orange Order to Hamas. <laughs> Right. Hamas a terrorist organisation <laughs> and you got all these bald 50 year old white men walking up and down the streets of Belfast doing their orange <laughs> order thing to the key and they're the same as Hamas <laughs> she got the sack yesterday she did yeah for that she got the sack do you think they wanted to sack her or it was just Man, I public don't backlash like Thomas lives like you know Thomas you live over there and when I lived over I li- when I moved over to England right mm-hmm. um, I moved over within a Labour government yes so my first three two three years I had, I had the tail end of the Labour government and the war in Iraq so Tony Blair was fucking get rid of because of the war in Iraq. Yeah. Then Cameron came in, you know, and then Nick Clegg came in. And it's been Tories now for the last, whatever, like 13 years or 14 years, whatever it is. I mean, have you seen a massive change in your time in London over the last like few years in terms of the rhetoric, the way people are being treated, the way people are being spoken to? Like the politics has gone so far to the right. It's so you mean nasty. as in... Uh, the general vibe. Nasty. Like the vibe of it. Like Yeah, I feel like it feels... It feels, and I don't know if it's because online is perpetuating it. Yeah. Um, but it does feel more aggressive. It, is, it seems that people are very more, like when I go to London now to do shows and stuff, like, don't get me wrong, like, I love it. Like, London's a great spot and it's a great city and different cultures and nationalities and stuff. But it just it just seems like there's a bit of an edge. You know, people are like on edge. People are, like you know, there's a big divide the over there, you know. It's us and them and the haves and haves nots and all that kind of stuff, you know. Like you look at the weekend, you had the march there for Hamas and then you had Tommy Robinson turn up with all the skinheads. Like, like what? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Was that, is that the orange dudes you said? No, 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 no. <laughs> so, you know, do you know about the marches here? Not really. Okay. Who's going to explain? I'll let you do it. Is that the I'm march not. that in, in um, Dairy Girls when they get stuck in the traffic in the march and there's the yes. guys? Yeah. Like, What's that, yeah? Yeah. Same thing. Oh, okay. yeah, I know a little so bit. This is, my, this is my interpretation. <laughs> this is my interpretation of the Orange Order here. Sean, James, can you correct me if I make a mistake? Okay. So obviously, as you know, Northern Ireland in the past has been a little bit divided, right? You have the Irish people and you have the British people. And the British people have a thing every July where they celebrate their Britishness and their William of Orange conquered over the Catholic King James. Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. In so in 16 what? 90. 1690. Can you explain the orange bit? Why okay, so well in the orange? With William of Orange, so they, orange. did he use the colour orange? That's how, that's it. Because he was it? Dutch. He was Dutch. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, Sorry, so they celebrate William of Orange's victory over the Irish King James on this island. No, it was, it was the Battle of the... It was a Catholic... It was a Catholic, king, king, Catholic king James. Right. So this guy, William, beat James, the Irish guy, and they decide the best thing to do is we want to celebrate that victory from the year 16th century. So on the 11th of July, every year here, they have a bonfire to celebrate it, okay? And then on the 12th, people who are members of the Orange Parade to celebrate William of Orange, they march up and down places in Northern Ireland to celebrate their Britishness and their victory over the Catholic King James. But obviously that causes issues with the Catholic yeah. community. So it's known as the Orange Order Parades, which have many, many years of history of trouble and violence. Now I get why they wouldn't do well with uh, with the Mardi Gras. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it would be hard <laughs> to blend it that's, in. That's a whole rainbow of <laughs> options and yeah. colours, whereas you they're just... just the wall, it re- yeah, yeah, yeah man. that's it. They need to open up the spectrum of colour. Have I correctly explained that kind of correctly? I don't want to get this it, wrong either. You're there, there, but... Right. So King James was the uh, a British king. Right. But he was just... He was bringing... Catholic religion back into the British monarchy. And they wanted rid of so, that. But uh, William of Orange was a Dutch king who was trying to overthrow the British monarchy and bring in, uh, well, to keep uh, Britain uh, Protestant. So then. Uh, I find it weird that it was a Dutch bloke. I didn't know that. Oh, it's everything's outsourced. Yeah, days. it's. <laughs> <laughs> So St. Patrick was Welsh, like. Yeah, that's it. I'm not even Irish. <laughs> I'm not even from Cork. I was born in West Not Mead. even white. Not even white. <laughs> We're not even in Belfast, mate. <laughs> so that happens every year, and it's right a bit on. of a contentious issue. And people are kind of obviously want to 
you know, have that tradition. But there are some aspects of the Orange Order would be quite extreme religious views. So they wouldn't be tolerant of homosexuality, women's right to choose, would be incredibly right wing. Would I be right there? The, some well, of them, not all of them. But it's the vast majority of, you know, unionist, orange, loyalist people tend to lean more to the right than that is. So if you basically put up a Palestinian flag, they wouldn't even think twice. So what's the opposite of Palestinian flag? Israel, I'll just put that one up then. Yeah, there's a lot of Whatever you are, they're the opposite. It's Ranger oh, Celtic. Okay. Like. Yeah, 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 yeah. So whatever you are, they'll be the opposite because their history is kind of like we, you know, and they, and like I live in an area which would be classed as a, there's a march near me. Can bother me like I can, care, can give two shits about it. Good luck today if that's what you do and you do it safely. And, and you do you're saying it's all predominantly old white it's men. men. It's just yeah, men. it is. It's just men. Yeah. yeah. Oh. There's the odd woman, is there? Not in the orange order, but in terms of like the commission, the belief system. That, that same, yeah. Oh yeah, men and women and kids still celebrate it, but the people who march are just men. Jesus Christ! Is there women allowed to march? I'm not too sure. Uh, I, I would, I it's would imagine that actually. Yeah. yeah. So, but. But that would be, you know, people doing that would be very, they love their their orange culture and that symbolises, you know, unionism, Protestantism, member of Britain. And then obviously on the Irish side, then you have St. Patrick's Day, but that's celebrated all over the world. But then there are certain things that happen for, that were set up and Sean would know more about this being from West Belfast and stuff, is that they set up a thing here called uh, Fela and Fobel, isn't that right? Yeah. So instead of getting the Irish people out in the streets and causing trouble, they created an arts festival to get them in to listen to music yeah, and stuff. Because before that, there used to, so during the Troubles here, there was... Um, been called an interment where uh, people could be detained and put in prison without trial. Uh, trial, you know. Um, so they, if they were suspected of anything, you know, or any involvement, like, like, so anyone could be thrown. So if you're walking down the street with two lads, you go just three lads there, all saying their early twenties. We think you could be involved in something, so we're just going to whip you in prison for a bit. And, Whoa! And typically, it was. I I can't remember the stats of it, but like the vast majority of people who were interned. We're from the Catholic, nationalist, Irish side of things, you know? Yeah. So mm. on the 8th of August every year, they used to hold a protest. Yep. Um, to, like, well, to pr- protest that. Um, and sort of to get back at, like, the, the tradition of, like, the 12th of July and stuff. Yeah. They would set their own bonfires on that, just to sort of cause a disruption. Yeah, yeah. Um, to highlight their issues, you know? And then, but it caused an awful lot of antisocial behaviour. And uh, to sort of combat that, then a lot of Catholic communities started hosting like music and arts festivals on that date to encourage like young people and stuff who were making the bonfires to stop doing that and get involved in like concerts. So, I mean, who would big march like that? You'd need a sponsor, wouldn't you? Would they have like Terry sponsor them? That's that's probably not. Yeah. I love how he's that. had that in his head. You've been waiting. He's, you're like, he's had that joke in his head. I know a comic <laughs> when I see a comic. He has had that joke in his head. Like, the minute orange, he went, Terry's chocolate orange. Terry's chocolate orange. You haven't heard I'm gonna, a thing. I'm going to sit quiet and wait to release that bomb. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's so that's why here, like, when you come here, like, you know, there's, there's streets and areas. Now, it, listen, I've lived here for years and I think it's a great place to live and I've, it's no issue. But when you actually come from abroad and you kind of learn the kind of basic, you realise how divided this place was, yeah. but how far it's come as well. I didn't yeah. know about Falls Road. So go on. When I first moved over, um, so my missus is, uh, her family's all from, <clears throat> from uh, the south. Mayo. Mayo. Uh, Limerick, um, but predominantly um, mayo. Is it mayo? Ma- mayo. Mayo. Mayonnaise. When I've said mayo. mayo, people go, no, no, mayo. They mayo. always correct me because I yeah. say, no, nah, it's my accent. I'm it's saying a, mayo. It's quiet O at the end, mayo. mayo. Really? Mayo. It's quiet. It's not a mayo. It's mayo. Mayo. It's quiet O. Mayo. Uh, Good to know. There we go. Mayo. Because <laughs> I was saying right. it wrong. Still not right. Do it again. <laughs> mayo. Yeah, go. Okay. <laughs> I was very scared. Yeah, where are you from? <laughs> people go like, people say, where are you from? I'm from Dublin. Where are you from? Mayo. <laughs> yeah, it's really mayo. reserved. They look at you then. There's a curse over mayo, you know, that they can't win the yeah, All the Ireland. Fuck, yeah. Is there really? What's the curse? They meet an Aussie? The GA football team. <laughs> yeah, so, so, <laughs> the, the, the curse is uh, the last time they won the, the All Ireland, like, so, like, the Gaelic football. Yeah, yeah. Oh, country. I've heard about this. Yeah. Mayo for some. Um, yes. Is it. Uh, when was it? Was it in the fifties, Andrew? Jesus. Yeah, they they came back from the final, but they didn't stop. At... So, yeah, there was a funeral on the way on the team bus's way home. 
Yeah, yeah. And they didn't like stop celebrating going past the funeral. So right. So like they're haunted by the. So the priest or somebody put a spell on the team that Mayo. Is that right? But that they would is never that, oh, win in all Ireland. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> They would never win in All Ireland in the time that all that team would still be alive. Yeah, holy and shit! One person left. Just one it? person, left. and everyone's at home going, "Die!" Yeah, it's everyone just like die. trying to kill him and it poison would be him crazy and stuff. If he dies, yeah. and then the next year they win, it. that would be. They've been in the final like a crazy. Amount so of time many times they can't win it, and everyone's like, "Is your man still alive?" Is he? Dude, that is actually amazing. It's a massive county, isn't it? Is it county? Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's a county. Yeah, like it's a small county in terms of population, but a big county in terms of heart. Mm. <laughs> I like that. Mayo's a nice spot. But, uh, Arigna was the other place that we, her grandma her family from? Uh, Drum Shambo and no, Arigna? Drum Shambo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, it, it got as far as like when Joe Biden came as well. Like, you speak to Mayo. Like, basically a Mayo dude, yeah, he like, said it. Saying Mayo for Sam, you know, because like, people just want them to win so bad. Fucking, the he's got your called, own fucking Siri over here. Yeah. This is incredible. He's got like, uh, the, the trophy's called Sam Maguire. To win the trophy, like the FA Cup, you know, it's called a Sam Maguire. So Biden came over and he just went Mayo for Sam. And everyone's like, everyone knows like what, they're, what he's talking about. Like, you know, it's like Aussie That's Rules. If somebody said like Auckland for Aussie Rules or something, you know what I mean? Something like that. Like, not Auckland, uh, Brisbane or something. Auckland's yeah. Australia, New Zealand, isn't it? I, I'm, um, I've got quite a lot of Irish in me. Oh yeah, I did the DNA test. Oh yeah, yeah. what's the percentage? Uh, I'm thirty six percent Irish, yeah. which is a third. You know, that's quite a lot for a, a fucking unacceptable, <laughs> <laughs> unacceptable level of Irish. Yeah, the pompous numbers, numbers up. Sligo and uh, in in the in the it shows you in the beautiful mid- county Sligo. Yeah, beautiful county. My, my mum's grandma was from there, and they moved to Glasgow because my mum's Glaswegian, so her grandma left during the famine. Went to Glasgow and then, but anyway, um, what were we Road. saying about why was I bringing up Falls Road? Falls Road, oh yeah. fuck, what a yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go I'm on. I'm still amazed the Mayo team is haunted. That has actually yeah. shocked me. That's cool. You know, have you heard that before? I've never heard oh, that. Brilliant. Before. YouTube I love later that. on when you get home from uh, Derry. Oh, yeah, Derry. He's yeah, not quite English. This is the first this is the first time these two have met and I didn't want that I didn't want to fight or anything. <laughs> very nice to each other. Okay. <laughs> Behave yourself, lads. Come on. Go on anyway, Dead De- Falls Rod. Yeah, yeah. So um I mean I don't want to say anything out of the line here. It's okay, you're fine. You it's all right. It's um, but I, I came to do the Empire, but this is my first time I was doing it in twenty nineteen. And uh Jade, who yeah. runs it, she's lovely. Um we uh after the show Another friend of mine, another comic, uh, Ryan Cullen. Yeah. Yes. Great. And we yeah, great. Dark mm-hmm. as fuck was great. And Before we were go. we did the Empire and afterwards we're having a bev downstairs and this group come up and as they come up and there's a group of lads and one girl and they're all like quite tattered and they just looked like they knew what the fuck they were doing. Yeah, you know I mean, they just look confident. Streetwise. Like, yeah, streetwise. They walked up. James's friends. <laughs> <laughs> they're ready to go on, <laughs> on a parade with you. And yeah, yeah. And they, uh, they rocked up. And as they started walking towards and they started talking, Jade said, all right, I'll see you guys later. No worries. And it's left. And I was like, oh, it's quite abrupt, but obviously she's in a rush. She left. Um, I'm there with Ryan and these guys and this girl were just like, so like, I'm pretty good with accents because my mum's Glaswegian. So I feel like I do all right over here. But this accent was so fucking strong. I literally was like leaning in trying to understand what they're saying. And Ryan at one point goes, do you know what they're saying? I'm like, <laughs> I have no fucking idea anything they're saying right now. So this is going on, carrying on. But they just kept buying us pints of Guinness. Wow, I thought like, these guys are lovely. Yeah. This is great. At one point, she pipes up, the, the sister. And the brother, as she starts talking yanks her ponytail really fucking hard, like rigs her head back. Jesus. Bang, and, and she was like, ah, oh, laughs and goes, I hate it when you do that. And I was like, <laughs> who are these people? <laughs> anyway, carries on for about 10 minutes. We're chatting, we're having some pints. And then, um, then Ryan finally goes, right, okay. Uh, he just felt like it was, he could sense it was starting to lean a certain way and goes, all right, we're going to get out of here. We've got an early flight, which we did. So we walked back across the road and he goes, do you know the baptism of fire of Belfast that you just went through? I was like, nah, I don't know. What, what do you mean? I said, they seem really lovely. He goes, I'll tell you what. He goes, they were all Falls Road. And I said, how would you know that? That's a street, like a road. Yeah. He goes, their accent was specific to an area. 
I was like, that's crazy to me. Like as an Australian, everyone's fucking yeah. But the fact that over here you've got accents specific to a, a street or a road is crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they had tattoos on their neck and apparently the tattoo, uh, I didn't know what it meant, but apparently it was a murder Brits tattoo, which I had no idea about. And he goes, yeah, <laughs> mate, they thought you were a novelty because you're Australian. But he goes, if you were English, it would have been a very different story tonight. Wow. Interesting. And I had no idea about this. Um, and I went back and told my missus and she was like, I told you <laughs> to be careful in Belfast. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know, people buying your pints. They just seem lovely. Yeah. I mean, they were really it. lovely. But That's insane. That's what? meant. But I get a different reaction. Like, what's it like up in Derry, James? It's, I was Is that dairy, tattoo a thing? I've never, I haven't. I mean, I'm sure it is. I mean, yeah, it could have been like a, just a, a raw tattoo. Yeah, that, that yeah. could have yeah. been that. We did say that they were raw. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then so I went back to my missus. I said, oh, I just had some pants with, with the raw. <laughs> 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 <Yeah, also, laughs> <also, laughs> lovely fellas. <laughs> I don't know why everyone's so upset. <laughs> <laughs> they seem nice. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from when they pulled the ponytail, <laughs> yeah, they were really yeah, friendly. Yeah. Yeah. And they counted down. They counted ball. down from ten all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I've never experienced anything. I've like never that. experienced anything like that. Wow. It but was, then again, like you know, I suppose they, they did get an Uber do, home do, do. and said that they'd lost their car for the third time that week. But that they week? lost their car. <laughs> <laughs> That, Start walking at that that's point. That's very unique. Yeah. That is very unique. <laughs> and like, you know where I'm going I with know. this. Uh, <laughs> what? Wow. Uh, carnival. Ah, oh, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> I didn't get it. I didn't then get yeah, it. Lad. That just shows you how I was brought up on this island. Completely naive. To believe the good of people. Streets I, like I was, I was totally brought up the same. Completely naive. It was never even talked about in my house. Yeah. So I didn't learn about all this stuff until much later in life. Really? Yeah. Like, I swear to God, like, I, I'm still... Does it seem like... Does it seem now, because that, that genuinely shocked me... Yeah. That they, that they had a tattoo that could have been threatening if I was not Australian, right? But, like, it seems like... Like, Belfast to me, having only been here for the last four years... I think it's a fucking incredible city. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that either. I love it here. I love it here too. I love yeah, it. Yeah, no, it is... And I feel like everyone is so friendly and so nice. Uh -huh. and ev I've never had a moment where I've gone. Mm. It's definitely changed. Like my dad grew up here, and but he lives. He's lived in Maharab for like thirty years now, so he still has the perception that it's mental mm. here. So if we're like in certain areas or even going to places, he's very much like, "Don't go there. Don't do this. Don't." Do but like I've never experienced. To me, it's just it's been all lovely. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. you've got to understand, the thing, the thing that I've learned from being here, and I, I know Sean's been here all his life, but there is a massive generation of people under the age of 34, 35, who know nothing but yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So when you're out in the pub and you're talking to a 30-year-old, they're just like, well, whatever. Like, But when you get up to the 60s and 70-year-olds, it's completely like, different. they don't yeah. go out. And this is what I mean. Like, it's There's certain pubs if you walked into that would be full of, that you would hear all about that kind of stuff. Yeah, but it, And it just it just depends where you are. It, like, it's There's more good than bad. Yeah, Here, no, it is. Yeah. Um, but it's there, generation, yeah. another generation of getting, you know, if it's every generation passes, it just gets smaller and yeah. smaller. And yeah, smaller. But, it, but it's still, still debated. There's still things you need to be wary of. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, one thing you probably wouldn't be aware of is, like, the fact of, like, if you're from one side of the community, you probably have, if, if you regularly go between the two different communities, and especially, like, rough areas, a lot of people have, like, different, like, we made up identities. Yeah. Like, it's like James McAvoy and Split. So, like, <laughs> when, 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 I, when I play, like, in a different town, it's like a very loyalist, like, town. Yeah. I have to be prepared that I can't be called Sean McDonald because that's, like, a real Irish name. He changed what, his name. What's your, what's your name when you change it? John Hill. Are you fucking serious? Yeah, you actually do that, name, yeah. yeah. And where, where is this? Let's say... Like how far um, away from here, like, hours-wise? Oh, like, you know... 20 minutes away. Get the well, fuck yeah. out. Very cool. Yeah, if you like, like, you would have to change. Like, I know, Sean, is, Sean is sorry. If you went in and you were like a Podrick and you were, your name is Podrick and you were playing Irish music in a Protestant area, you'd go in and go, what's your name, Paul? Get mm. out. Yeah. Holy shit. Still. 
Yeah, because, it, like, see if we were taking, like, an interval or something, and you go into the toilet, somebody would come up behind you at the urinal and be like, oh, right, haven't seen you guys in here before. No way. Like, um, where are you from? Where are you from? Where are you from? You say Belfast, and they're like, what about some Belfast? <laughs> yeah, they're fishing. Yeah. They're fishing for information. Yeah. But see, it's little wow. subtle things like that all the time. Yeah. Like, for example, I did a gig in the West Belfast, right, which is obviously the, the Irish area, and I had one of the best gig ever. And I said on stage, you know, since I've been living up here in the north, love the north, and I'm doing this, and the joke's, joke's going really well. And then at another point in the set, I said, when I moved to Northern Ireland, this guy just shouted at me, there is no such thing as Northern Ireland. Yeah, there it's you go, the you'll get that. Ireland. I'm like, and he's like, there is no Northern Ireland. We're just, the, we're Ireland, but we're the north of the island. We're not Northern Ireland. We don't recognise Northern Ireland as a country. Like, Wow. It's the north of Ireland. It's like the north of England. So it's crazy, isn't it? Because like we were saying before, like, you know, uh, Belfast is so like, I feel like really endearing. I feel yes. like it's got proper character to it. Yeah. Yeah. The people are fun. Mm-hmm. They're great. Um, the comedy here is fucking awesome. But like, and I don't mean to like compare to the troubles at all because it's 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 you can't you know what i mean like yeah. it's that's such a full-on history but like adelaide where i'm from is a really really sweet little it's the smallest capital city of australia but all the other cities like if you ever meet anyone from sydney or from melbourne or even brisbane or perth and you go oh where are you from and i say i'm from adelaide they all go Ooh. Oh, every shit. single time right. because back in the 80s it was some of the most horrific murders in in Australian history happened in Adelaide so we were kind of known no, as the murder town there's a film about it called Snowtown with like <laughs> this guy who chopped people up and uh, put them in barrels behind a bank like this and it, horrific... it wasn't it was non-political it was just people loved murder and just murder yeah. Yeah, 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 just yeah. Loved it. yeah yeah just Adelaide <laughs> It was the past like, time. Yeah. Sounds like Limerick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was about the thing. It sounds Limerick. like this fucking car park. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, back in Murder Town, eh? Yeah, I felt at home. I was like, oh, I'm in Adelaide. No. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just been like, it's mad because people have this like, misconception of Adelaide because they know the history of it yeah. and how That's interesting. full on it used to be. And I'm like, no, 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 we're good now. <laughs> um, Adelaide <laughs> is now in the top 10 most livable cities in the world and Lonely Planet, right? Like. Yeah. So they've turned that murder right around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have rebranded. They've they've rebranded. rebranded. Got a new website again. and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've yeah. gone from murdering to reviving. We're bringing people back, back. from the dead. <laughs> yeah. <We're>, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it's, I feel like face on murder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but do you think the history of Belfast, like, it's so intense and like, uh, I feel like now it's it's it is a. Well, I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't a beautiful city before, but like, from all I know of Belfast is just good. But I'm saying, saying? you want to interest about the history of Belfast, get the history of Derry. Oh, don't ask me. It's I don't know shit. <laughs> no, but it's like, but it's he's just going to no, march. No, but yeah, no, I don't like, want to go. Derry march going. Color. Yeah, but Derry, Derry is a, another kettle of fish down with history, then. But isn't yeah, it? They've, they've got, I know you're from the county of Derry. Yeah, Derry, yeah, yeah. They've like, got like two sides of the city as well, and it's divided like by the Be- river. Belfast. Derry's is equally as divided as Belfast. Like. Mm. Yeah, the TV show sort of like yeah, yeah, yeah. That to be honest, that's where I I, I, look, I actually learn a lot <laughs> from Derry Girls. From Derry yeah. Girls, yeah, for real. <laughs> that Derry Girls. Yeah. I was How like, was that watching? Like, cause I always find that interesting. What was that like watching that show as someone not from here? So I was like, how would it translate to other people? Cause my missus is Irish family, right? Um, you know, as I was saying, meal, meal, meal. Silence, quiet all, meal, quiet all. I. I saw her and her, her mum and that all laughing so hard at the traditional stuff that was yes. happening in the show, the cultural things, the the dances at the weddings and the different stuff. And for me, I was just like, I didn't know that that was like, you know, the, the, is it Rock Your Boat? Rock Your Boat, Bro, yeah. That's, that sort of stuff. that's big. I had no idea what the fuck any of that was. But like, they're laughing so hard. So watching it, for me, watching it with them, it, it was kind of like when I first watched Gavin and Stacey. Yeah, I wouldn't have found it that funny, I don't reckon. But then watching it with people who do find it funny and explaining things in the show, you kind of get the humour more. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what yeah, I'm yeah, I get you, yeah. But then watching Derry Girls and going like, oh, fuck, things were heated as fuck back in the 80s. Like, it was it was the 80s, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Crazy. So, it's great, <laughs> isn't it? It's great. But the thing is, like, I mean, I've lived here three years now. You're visiting. James, you're from here. Sean... You're from here. We all have a different 
well, to you it's normal. To you it's mm-hmm. normal. To me it's like, wow, this happened on my island and I'm only a couple four hours down the road in the car. Mm. And But when you actually come here, and I've said it numerous times in this pod, is, but 98% of life here is no different than London or Manchester or Dublin yeah. or Cork. Yeah, but, yeah. And that's the thing. It tends to get like really overblown, you know, and like, and we'll go, oh, <laughs> like, it's so mad. You but know, you can but, do it to but, wind people up as well. Yeah, you, you. What's it like over there? Here's our attention. Oh, geez, you're lucky I'm here. Like, I fucking got out <laughs> today. And, <laughs> sure, there's a fence up outside my house. I can't. I'm only allowed out between three and four. And the, pot, the, 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 the Brits are out between four and six. And I'm only allowed shop for one hour a day. <laughs> there is quite a lot of disruption still. Like, see. Um, I think there's a lot of humour in it, though. Like, that, people. But Sean would have, have grown up. Right, right works are not interruptions. No, I mean, like. <laughs> <laughs> bombs see, are. If you're, if you're, <laughs> oh. See if you're uh, about to like go out to shops on a Saturday, or like you've like said, "Oh, I'm going like let's meet up on Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon, like two o'clock," and you go to leave the house and you put out of the driveway, go, get onto the road, and you're like, "Oh, fuck!" The whole road's closed off because there's a march, and you're like, oh, God, "Yeah, it yeah. happens a lot." Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's still marching. Yeah, and, and then um. How often are these guys marching in the orange? Once a year. Oh, but they do loads. No, they do like loads. All over in a year. And God, they do little marches. Could you not give them like games. a high vision? Yeah, get I... them to do some, like, some fucking tarmac or something? Maybe some like... <laughs> give them some mean? litter picking as they're going like... Yeah, just fucking the high yeah. <laughs> You can march, but <laughs> do a bit of work. <laughs> Sweep the streets as they're marching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, give I, back. I, walk I some dogs. <laughs> I think they've got my Google Calendar synced up to their phone because it always is when I'm going out for a fucking coffee or going to the <laughs> <laughs> It's brilliant. Thomas, you're in uh, You're in Belfast to your show at the Limelight tonight. Obviously, this won't go out tonight, but we had you on the radio this morning and uh, we're hopeful that uh, after your trip uh, to Belfast and the Limelight, you will come back and you will continue to perform in this beautiful part of the world, in the north of Ireland. Oh, absolutely. I probably um, love it. James, you're keeping well, you're keeping busy? Yeah, keeping busy, yeah. yeah gigging right. away. Gigging away, right material. Thing. Right material. We've got a podcast coming up, me and William and Jasmine and Bruna. So that's coming up. Oh, that's going to be fair. Oh, Jasmine, yes. Yeah, dude, Jasmine's She's great. She's great crack, yeah. Jasmine. And Jasmine Sierra. Oh, okay. Remember? Comedian right. from America. She lives here. Yeah. Okay. How the fuck she lives in County Antrim? I don't know. She loves it here. She Where absolutely from? loves it. Miami. Where do you live yeah. now? County Antrim. How, <laughs> how does an American go over here? Bella. She she kills it. She does really well. Yeah. Well, I don't mean comedy wise. I yeah. mean in terms of like cultural. Like Fine. they must because I mean, Americans yeah, it's not an issue at all. Like, yeah, what's going on? Yeah. Oh yeah, and the Irish hate it, but that's yeah. Yeah. Oh, we hate it, we but we love go. it. Yeah. Here we go. She's yeah. too happy for this place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will, you know. But yeah, so that's starting out soon. That's yes, great. that's starting out. Then I've got the Terrace Comedy Club. Yes. On the thirtieth. We've what? got Terrace Laughs. So it's a hotel called The Terrace. <laughs> the Terrorist Comedy Club. That's what he said. We like to give terrorists a that's, chance that's, that's, to do a bit of stand up. Like rehabilitation. <laughs> right. Uh, 30th of November, Paul Curry. Yeah, Paul's very good. James, oh, thanks for coming in. No worries. You're thanks for having me. Now and again. Thomas, thanks for being on the pod again. Thanks for having uh, me. I appreciate seeing you and good luck tonight. I hope it works out for you well. Thanks, and all mate. the best with being, a, with being a dad as well. And hopefully we'll get to see you back over at the Empire or on your own solo so- show pretty soon. That's it from this week, uh, everyone. Big thanks to Sean as well. Some very valid oh. contributions as well in terms of the history of the island. As we all know Sean <laughs> knows Sean all McDonald. about what they're doing. Honestly, <laughs> I was so impressed. Oh, Sean's from the West. Sean, Sean's from near the falls. Like. Knows the crack. Oh, yeah. oh, Sean grew up with this, like, and he's also a Gael Gore, speaks fluent Irish. And then the rap. Yeah. And he's in. Don't don't say that. <laughs> we do not condone that. You may think that this from the camera is slanty. It, it isn't slanty. It's just the way the camera has been. So please don't message about that. We are changing it to get a green background. Uh, we placed the wrong order. Uh, but that's just the way things are in Cork and please do sign up to the Patreon £3 extra a month please it will really help us as we grow okay the live show is nearly sold out buy your tickets go online it's all on my Instagram the link tree the website but you don't realise £3 a month for three extra episodes plus loads of other features and benefits does really help the podcast we're in a new studio why because of Patreon we want to go bigger we want to go better we want to keep getting great guests great guests like James and Thomas onto the podcast thanks everybody for being with us buy some merch come and see us live continue support is always appreciated. Gurmila Margot, Sloan.